Hey guys, Cloud here, and today I have an update to the slow casting data pack. I apologize in advance for the audio, I don't have my good mic, but I tried some AI audio enhancements, so maybe it'll be usable. So today we are going to be covering how to use the update to the slow casting data pack. In the past, a couple of years ago, I made a data pack on slow casting, and it used area effect clouds to essentially iterate ray casting, so you get the effect of doing something like TP dot 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 five but you check iteratively along the path of those five or ten or however many you want to do uh, this solves the problem of uh, having kind of slower projectiles that are not ray cast based so let's say that you want to uh, have like a rocket launcher uh, but you want the rocket launcher not to be motion based you want to check as you go for collisions uh, and in this case we have the case of a sword and we want to check the so what the sword hits along the path and control really finely what's going on uh, we could also add parabolic motion if we wanted to because it's a very flexible system um, but it does require you to be pretty good at commands already to use it properly so inside the pack uh, which will be linked on the github uh, there is a demo showing how to use this implementing the sword throwing mechanic so all this does is it checks if you drop your sword and if you drop your sword it will use the data pack how it's meant to be used so we will specify a couple variables which will go over what they mean and then it runs the slow cast start anchored to the player's eyes. Now in this pack, if you are going to actually use it and you want the entity that comes out of the slow cast to come out of the eyes, you need to make sure you do this position command to actually move where the start of the command is being played from because it doesn't assume that things are coming out of the, the eyes of the target entity. Uh, so then that's all this does. And there are four variables basically that you work with type, entity, iterations, and recursion, and they control how the slow cast behaves. So inside the slow casting, there's a couple functions you're allowed to use. Those are the ones outside of this and in anything not labeled Z private. So we have start, which starts the slow casting. Uh, you're not supposed to edit this, but you are allowed to call it. Then you have stop. And again, you're not supposed to edit this, but you are allowed to call it if you ever want to stop the raycast. Uh, now inside the raycast function, there is list, which lets you specify what loop type you want to use, so what raycast you want to use um, during each iteration of the slow cast. And so in this case, if the type is zero or one, it will run loop, but if it is two, it will run loop two, which has another little demo that you can play around with. Uh, let's actually take a look at what that other demo is. And so we'll switch the type to two and the entity to two, and we'll type slash reload, and we'll drop it. And you'll see that what it does is it actually throws an armor stand and sadly it's throwing from my eyes to make it actually work it should be anchored feet there we go and so now it throws an armor stand but it doesn't face the correct way so i didn't make it the main example uh, just because it doesn't face the correct way due to uh, some issues with minecraft rotation being buggy and so i will just reverse this anyways so to fully utilize this, I guess let's first start with the entity function, which you may edit. So entity is the thing that actually spawns for the raycast. And I have a additional function here that says spawn to. And so if the entity score is set to zero, it will use a marker, which is the default use case of this. Uh, first example, if you're doing like a projectile that uses just particles to represent it, then you're just going to leave it at zero. But if you set it to one, it will do something else and you can keep adding these uh, conditions, just copy and paste and put one below. Uh, you can make it call a sub function if you need to do more than one command, but otherwise just run a summon command. Now, anything that you summon that is going to be part of this slow cast needs the tag of slow cast and the tag of slow cast new. Slow cast new specifies that it is a new thing that it's adding and slow cast lets you know that it is a slow casting entity, one that will be the uh, kind of anchor point that gets teleported along the line. Uh, in this case, this one spawns a item. And in this case, it goes into a function and that function spawns an armor stand, which is positioned a little bit downwards from the eyes so that the uh, head lines up with the player's sideline. Now, once you've picked what entity you want to spawn based on the entity score, you can pick what loop you want to do based on the type score. And so uh, I know I could have called it loop, but I called it type just because it's like a different type of slow casting and it's used in some other places. Um, but essentially this will, this type score will just indicate the loop. Now, as you might've noticed, um, 
With this one, the scoreboard that you check is a little different, and that's because you need to maintain the type score throughout each iteration. Um, but nonetheless, if the score is zero, run loop, which is the default version. Uh, if it's one, run the default. If it's two, run the special. Uh, and this is where you can add your own fo loop functions just by copying and editing the file yourself and then adding it to this uh, list, which the list is called from the private functions. And so inside the loop, what it does uh, as, as the default placeholder loop is it uses this hashtag temp score on this function scoreboard slowcast ITT to basically uh, count how far you've traveled so far. And so you just need to remove one each iteration from that. Uh, then you can do anything in between here, and then at the end you want something similar to this, where it calls itself, as long as the score is greater than 1. And you do want some kind of stopping criteria, so in this case, the stopping criteria, um, well, if the temp score is 0, then you want to TP the entity here, and if there is no error, then you run the stopping criteria. This command is 100% necessary, otherwise the uh, slowcast will not move. This command is optional um, if you want it to be able to stop mid, but I feel like you kind of need it. And then this is like the totally optional. This is just something that will kill uh, anything that is not the slowcast caster and not the slowcast entity. So slowcast.dis will be the entity that is slowcasting, and slowcast.caster is the entity that threw it. So I added these, this little additional thing that lets you kind of know, all right, who threw it? Let's make sure we don't kill them during the iteration. Uh, you can take a look at loop 2. This one is just modified with position offsets to work for the armor stand so that it detects when the head of the armor stand hits something and not the feet. And finally, the last thing you should modify is the end functions. And so uh, if ty the type goes with the end, so the type is comes from the same place, and so if type is 0, then we will go to end end. If type is one, then we will go to end end one. If type is two, we'll go to end end one. And so end end just says at s end. And in this case, at s will be the player. And then in this one, it gives a sword when it ends. It does give at s sword. And so that's kind of an important thing to note is when the slow cast hits the ground, uh, or if it hits it, whenever you call the stop function, basically at s will be the caster which is just useful for every kind of use case. However, the position that it's played at is wherever the thing landed. And so you can also uh, find the entity that it was doing the slow casting, although it shouldn't be relevant. The last thing that I need to cover is the two other scoreboard inputs that I manipulated here, but they're pretty self-explanatory. So the first one is recursions, technically. This is the first one in order of importance. So recursions is how many times your loop recurses. And then iterations is how many times you run those recursions. Uh, I didn't go with like speed or anything like I did before because you're able to modify this loop and those words, abstract words wouldn't make much sense anyways. And so since my raycast travels at 0 0.5 blocks per, per recursion, if I say recursions of five, that means it will travel 2.5 blocks per, per iteration. And so it would be similar to doing TP forward 2.5 blocks, but then I do 30 iterations, so it will travel uh, 70, I think 70, 2 point, no, 75. It will travel 75 blocks in total unless it hits something or an entity. And so you can use these two values as well as editing your own loop function to control kind of the speed at which your, en your entity moves. Uh, you would want to reduce this uh, position stuff based off of accuracy that you need uh, so you don't cut corners as much, and then you would have to bump up this to match the same speed. And so that's just something you can play around with. So that's everything. Basically, it's just a library that organizes a system for teleporting an entity in a straight line from where you started from for a certain distance at a certain speed. And it's just really useful for uh, mechanics in games where you want to draw a straight line, but not instantly. Anyways, guys, if you thought this was useful, please leave a like. Let me know what you want to see next. I have some tutorials coming up if this was successful um, on things we've already done, as well as my dungeon data pack. I'll give a little update to that maybe in a YouTube short, um, but it's really close to being finished. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.